The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'll share a true story with you. The story happened years ago, um, about 10 years ago, when I was living in New York. There was a woman, we'll call her Wendy, because that was her name. And um, she had just started getting involved uh, in a serious way in her Judaism. And family wasn't from at the time. And I was giving a class on tefillah. And as soon as I finished the class, she says, you know, I want to share a story that just happened to me. We said, okay, let's hear. She says, two weeks ago, I went on uh, like this conference, a Jewish conference. You know, for, they had classes, uh, like a Shabbaton, basically. And at the beginning of this Shabbaton, she says, there was a, I guess, an opening event at the beginning and a lot of people were standing together and we hear this crash and a bunch of screams. We looked up, there was a balcony and the, the railing from the balcony had given way, it broke and a woman fell right off the balcony, two stories and lands face down. She said, the lady wasn't moving. And everybody was screaming. People were panicking. What happened? Apparently, first of all, they called the EMT. They took her to the hospital. She had bleeding in the brain, a fractured skull. She had broken bones in her neck, broken bones in her back, broken kneecaps. So this woman, Wendy, she says, at the time, she said this, she goes, I don't pray. I don't pray. I don't go to synagogue. I don't keep Shabbat. She says, I I don't do any of that. She said, but I learned about this idea at the time. She had learned about this idea of how when we pray together as a group, and specifically when we pray for other people, it could actually bring a merit. It could help somebody. This was all the, this all, this was a whole new concept to Wendy. She said, those two days, which was, which was this Jewish conference, this Shabbaton, all that happened that weekend was 120 women. She said, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. She said, I went home. I went to shul. I didn't work on Shabbos to the best of her ability, but how she understood it. And she said, for the first time, I really, really, really prayed for someone who I didn't even know. And we all did it as a group. And she went on to tell us that the woman made an incredible, miraculous recovery. She said she was out of the main hospital uh, uh, and into rehab literally four days after this happened. And then she was moved to a secondary rehab a week later. And she told us that she was doing amazing. This was 10 years ago. It sounds like today, thank God, the woman's probably fine. I hope, Mir Hashem. The power of tefillah when we come together as a group and specifically how much more so on Purim itself. Because Purim has this intrinsic power with it that we revisit every single year. It's amazing, the power when we, when we dive in. I remember a true story, one last story I'll share with you. I was here in Toronto and I get a call from uh, one of our members of Shul, one of the Balabatim here. He said, my father's on his deathbed. The, the doctors, they want to take him off life support. What do I do? So he said, that the doctor said he has 30% brain function. He hasn't spoken in days. He's on a feeding tube, whatever. So I quickly, I grab my sitter. I run over to the hospital. I meet him at the hospital and I'm there because I want to say the final tefillos with the guy before he passes away. So the guy's not conscious. He hasn't been conscious in days. And I turn to the guy, we'll call him Al. I said, Al, hi, my name is Rabbi Sittner. I'm here, I want to say some tefillos with you. I open up my sitter, I start saying some tefillos. And as I'm davening, the guy's eyes open up. I'm not joking, a true story. If it didn't happen to me personally, I would think it was made. The guy, eyes open up. And he says, he says, prayers? You want prayers? Where's my yarmulke? Someone get me my yarmulke. <laughs> That's what he says. And he grabs, I'm not joking, he grabs the sitter out of my hand. 
He's holding it upside down. He can't see a thing. The guy's like blind without glasses. He's holding the sitter upside down. Where's my yarmulke? We got to pray. I couldn't believe it. Why? Because I'm standing by the guy's side and we're starting to dive. We're starting to say tefillos. And all of a sudden, he comes to a whole new reality. Guy comes alive. The power of tefillah. But specifically in a group and specifically on Purim is so, so, so powerful. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. StoriesToInspire.org.